Okay. Hi, everybody. Nick Blazier here with Michelle Lamote. Lamote? Lamote. Lamote. I like mm -hmm. it. From mm -hmm. Belgium. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm from the U.S. Uh, we're picking up here in the middle of the action. Sorry for the delay. We had a bit of technical difficulties getting the stream going. But we can see Zdenyuk won a recube in an ace point game that was crashed and looked a little ugly. It looks like the recube was pretty wild. I didn't get to see that. But we're zooming right into seven away, three away against Christian Monk Christensen. Christian trailing here. Um, and it looks like Zdenyuk's got a solid lead right, right early on. Hopped over a prime here. That two's development is pretty strong. Um, he's going to be down in the race, though, so Christian's getting back in it. Keep going. Yeah. And... Yeah, okay. So just that little bit of board development in the 11 point is pretty strong here, though, but PR Christian's here. obviously got the, is, be the anchor here. in the race. And with this big of a trail against three away, I think Zdenyuk's not going to be sending very many cubes at this score. And Christian's going to be thinking about it pretty early. But too early here. He doesn't have any any big like game-defining roles or anything like this. But this looks pretty reasonable. He's got an anchor. It doesn't hurt too much to do. It's not the ideal game plan to be attacking when you're outboarded like this. But the sixes don't leave him a lot of options. But yeah, great play. He found it. Um, yeah, Zdeni, it's just going to enter here. And now with, uh, yeah, a four prime slotted two ways and another inner board point, he's got a little bit to think about, but seems reasonable to take a roll here too. Of course, Christian is looking at um, positions which are gammonish. Yeah. He doesn't need much to cube. I mean, if he has like 56, 58% winning chances and 20% gammons, I think at this score he can ship the cube. Yeah. But blue has a very healthy front position. Yeah. Yeah, there's little risk of Zdeniak sending a recube, like right. even less, so he's not going to send very many initial cubes to begin with, right? Uh, this is a challenging six, six to play. Yes. He just doesn't have good sixes. That nine to three makes sense. You, you hate opening up, letting, you know, like the eight point's actually a better point than the two, so you don't really like to break it to make that. That's so this a is a play. very strong play. Pure. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually mm -hmm. quite correct. You're stuck leaving shots either way. Um, what to do here? Wow. Yeah, so he would love to have that anchor against, even if he hits, there's still 10 in the zone, hit, but I think it's got to be yeah, worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Sure. I see why he's thinking about it, though. Um, and then the three is just, there's nothing else to do, so you're going to play that one mm -hmm. down. Yeah, this is definitely yeah. the DMP play. Of course, he, he um, gives mm. up on the anchor, but... So now what Before four are we going to play with this? Um, yeah, I guess it's just sort of a distraction play and not wanting to break anything else. Um, zdenyuk has got good aces all over the place. This is probably his best one, though. Yeah, we're going to hit two. I like that play. Mm -hmm. And he's got a really strong position here. I still don't think he can think no, about no, a cube no, for a while no. behind a four prime. No, he can't. No way. But four back, and he's got a great prime of his own. This looks like it's going to make the five, but mm -hmm. it could make the bar point. I think it's got to make the five, though, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. This is less blotty for sure. I mean, uh -huh. if we look around, we're we're leaving still shots kind of all over the place. Well, actually, it doesn't. Yeah, it's that ace up on the midpoint. We could end up with three of our own behind. Mm-hmm. Um, this doesn't look too bad to me, personally, because you want to have a free reign of getting your back checkers yeah. moving. And it looks like it was an error. Really? Um, oh, well, wow. Yeah. The five point then... Yeah, the five points just ...would so have strong. been correct, yeah. yes. I can see he why could have taken a bit more time, I guess, maybe put it on the board, yeah. but there's the five point. Yeah, anyway, yeah. but a two, three back game structure. Wow, wow, what a beautiful game this is yeah. like. Prime versus prime. I don't think this is very beautiful for uh, for white. For white. No, 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 no. You're right. It's, it's maybe not, too good to double yeah. almost. Could this really be too good to, to double go. for blue? I don't know. It's, so at these three-way scores, if there's enough winning chances, you just can't send it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this is this would be a confusing one where I'd be starting to think about it for sure because it's it looks kind of hopeless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yes, for it white. looks pretty hopeless. I think this is too good to double for blue, but this is yeah. my amateurish. Uh, it very well could be. Ooh, wow. That's big. Yeah, now, now he's going to slow down and think about it. Okay. But 
Yeah, and I think I think what's going to happen at this score very often, like you're saying, Michelle, is uh, it's just going to go from not being good enough to double, not enough wins, to mm -hmm. too many gammons to send it, and just mm -hmm. it's better mm -hmm. to play on. I think and so, really... It's a great throw. Dancing is great. Yeah. It's not... Wow, this... Ah, yeah, yeah, he's on the bar. Okay. Even at this level of play, a lot of times, like, it's it can be just better to not even think about the cube at this score and I just agree. play. You might make one small play. error along mm -hmm. the way. Um, and just keep going, yeah, yeah. So, should White get the cube? I mean, he needs to drop this, right? I wow, think I would still drop it at the score. It's no double yeah. take, apparently, wow. Oh, goodness, there's still 30% wins there. I'm glad they showed us that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, I, I don't know if I would find the take here. That's no, tricky. No, no, no. I wouldn't know how to evaluate it. No, really. me neither. <laughs> I guess I can see that he's pretty close to cracking here, potentially that blue doesn't have a ton of time, so there must be wins, right? He's got to get that six um, before mm -hmm. he starts to have to play behind. Yeah. And so, and suddenly white has good timing in this game, too, just having yes. danced enough times effectively. So this is, yeah. I mean, we've arrived at a position where it's pretty clear that it's not a double now. But, Correct. Uh, yeah, a couple rolls I ago agree. would have been tough. Yeah. Now suddenly it also <laughs> dawns on me that white has a uh, take here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a couple of rolls ago, it uh, looked a bit um, murky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm a bit surprised that uh, Zdeniak didn't take a bit more time to ponder yeah. uh, the cube. But this I is a very clever four here, too. I, I like this, that he's thinking. So I, it looks so automatic just to clean up a blot and play 11 to 7 looks really flexible. Yes. But playing that oh, four no, off the five behind yeah, and yeah, like yeah. You, you fix your timing if you get hit with an ace. Right. This is a back game play where it yes, doesn't look correct. very intuitive and, and you kind of would prefer that to... Ah. Yeah, and it works. There it we works. go. It works, yes. So it's it's a little... Uh, he yeah. thought about it a long time because he is still primed here and there's still some cracking <sighs> potential, but you can see he's got better timing on the front side now too, Blue does. Wouldn't he? Wouldn't White have the option of, uh, of like... Um, Really going for the back game. Multi-blotting. For sure it is, but I think he's got some forward chances here too, and I think this balances it well. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a good play. Oh, that's great a great roll. roll for White as well. Get up to the edge. He's, oh, look at this. We, we missed the cube on the blue side now somewhere. I figured there must be some small technical doubles happening in there at some point, but yeah. that's fascinating. It's I'm surprised. very hard to yeah. find the doubling window at three away, seven away. Goodness, I have no idea why. Oh, wait, sorry, was it... Yeah, who? It was blue, yeah. No, it was white, I think it's saying. No, 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 it says, ah. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think blue is the black checkers on the XG feed. So, yeah, there we go. So somehow he missed Oh, uh, no, again. no, because the three one was played by white. So the XG feed shows the white checkers as black and the black checkers are. Oh, no, sorry, the three one was, they both played. The three one was played by blue. I remember now, that was the anchor up. Yeah, but okay. Ah, yes, yeah. okay. Enter an anchor. Okay, so blue five two here. How are we again? We're keeping that checker back on the sixteen is kind of nice, just so he can't. If he does roll the six, you have a chance at sending it behind the prime again. Um, yeah, these these are really technical plays. Where exactly you want your spares? It mm. varies with which back game you're playing against, which two anchors. You need to keep numbers that can play safely later on during the bear off. Mm -hmm. um, Real challenge for me to figure those plays out, mm -hmm. but I'm sure both these players have good ideas about that. Um, and it's really the, what we're gearing up for here. Okay, he wants to slot the back again. This is the idea of these like, tricky back game plays, yes. where in case he does roll the six and escape, then we want to recycle and kind of stay back and give him trouble. And, and Zdeniak wants him to just crunch like this is the idea, just like uh, White has done. Forcing him to make the ace and deuce points in a game like this, you want to keep him much higher and keep a high prime. So um, this is going very well for him. But white has kept all their checkers alive, mm -hmm. so one six really makes a big difference here. If mm -hmm. he can just get that moving around, he's still got winning chances. Mm -hmm. um, and as we talked about before, yeah, this is tricky here. I like. I don't think you want to cover the ace. I don't see any reason to do this. Mm -hmm. I think you want to bring checkers in and get closer to bearing off. Um, yeah. But he must see some play of spares or something that's going to slow him down, so I bet there's some sort of logic there. But that six was a great six, of course. Needs another one very quickly. 
Um, and wow. he left himself with no fives by taking the spare off there. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what I was talking about with these, nice. these back game plays being very tricky. Is you need to know against the two three that if you don't have a spare on the six, you're not going to have a five to play. Mm -hmm. These are things that just have to become kind of intuitive for you, or you have to search for the numbers and make sure you get the right play, because mm -hmm. um, it's just not going to work the way that usual backgammon does, and things like no, this happen. No, right. So there's a lot of danger here now, and White is fine hitting already. He's already got the the better four point board, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's going to be a long time till he can turn it around. But yeah. See, and now it's like White who has this containing uh, theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a difficult game to contain, too, with all those deep points made, but yeah. it but can like, happen. What should White do at a certain moment? Should he swap the six or five point? Um, yeah. This that is not is a good one. Oh, it's so really like bad. now, does he swap the six? I think he does. Yeah, I yep, think sure. you lack the timing. I mean, the only other option is going to be to stay outside or play. Yeah, I think this is, when you lack timing is a great time usually to make a slotting play like this. When you just, you're out of flexibility, you wow. need something to go, oh, this is, this is horrible. Yeah, well, that's going to play itself. And you're going to go to the ace, and that's two dead checkers. And that is huge amount of winning chances down the road. He's laughing it off. That's nice, shaking his mm -hmm, head a little bit. Yeah. And now Zdenyuk is thinking about the cube here. Yeah, that's fascinating. It must have, Gavin chances have gotten way down with how many checkers have come around and his impurity. But it's, you know, with those dead checkers, it's going to be so hard to win. Finally sends a little bit. Gee, I would. And we can see, I, I like, you know, if you know that it's oh, that much. Takes. Yes. So this is about what I was Gee. about to say here, is that when you have a cube that's too good by a small amount like that, 0.072, mm -hmm. it's often, if you know that somehow, you should be sending those cubes mm -hmm. because there is always some chance that they'll find a way to take it, right? And you still have to play it out. Usually you're probably going to have the more complicated side to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it's worth taking that little bit of equity risk, I think, to get in a situation like this where they'll play you for the match for it instead. Um, so if you can win a gammon somehow... Um, you know, that could be the match very quickly. But of mm -hmm. course, Christian took that cube because if he can turn this around at all, um, he's going to have a very potent and early cube to send back, which we could be getting in that territory already since when he loses this game, he loses a lot of gammons. You cancel those by sending a four cube over. And your opponent doesn't get full value of the cube either, so you got to be really careful you're not losing your market here. Um, he doesn't really have to be even a favorite to send it. He just has to get kind of close to being a favorite or very likely to lose a gammon if he loses. Oh, what a roll. Christian's finding some good ones here. <laughs> some good, found a way to crack in the prime with entering on the anchor, too. That's, that's tough. Yes. So this, yeah, this has been, a, a, well, it is uh, an amazing match, and as we can see already, we were like guessing about how many players would end up with PRs over four, and we already see two players here with, with like very uncharacteristic PRs so over yeah. six. Mm -hmm. So that's just what the game throws at you if you get thrown into a back game with containment uh, yeah. motifs. Uh, then it's really tough. Yeah, this is only so game it's been two a shockingly been, yeah. complex and. Uh, tumultuous game in fact yeah a lot of dead checkers and everything too there's just a lot of things complicating these games yes and that's something that we talked about before these players got started today too is just the huge amount of variance yeah in the in in any pr game to game especially match to match i mean this is just perfectly within these players ranges mm -hmm. of what they can you know they're, they're capable of playing a zero. <laughs> they're capable of playing in this, you know, what they're calling an expert in advance range as well. And what matters is that it averages out to that um, grandmaster level that they all have to be to make, to make it into this tournament, which is uh, four PR or lower over a long, long run. And many of them are going to be playing down in that three, slightly under a three for a couple of the players here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... Lots of variants in the PR, too. It'll be fascinating to see how that plays out over the weekend, how that affects the results. Yeah. This is a great roll. So still, um, the, the match could be over in soon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gammons are in Oof. the picture for blue, for Zdenek. Especially after that roll, yeah. 
Ooh, any oh, covers. Two, three, four, right. So we 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 are looking at a possible quick end of this match, and both players will be very disappointed with their PR. And I think Zdenjek. I think, yeah, his, the cube we missed in game one, the recube to four yeah. in game one. That's all of it. Will yep. cost him dearly. Um, this is interesting. I like this play, but this is. I like it too. White's in a tricky spot where he's got to obviously backgammon don't matter, mm -hmm. but it's going to be tough to win with all those dead checkers. Matter. Yeah, and you really want to. Saving the gammon's still worth something. You're still in the match if you of can course. do it. Of course. So wasting those two pips to go all the way to the four is is mm -hmm. a little bit upsetting. And I think what is the he's got four and six is like ten, so it must be a close. I guess uh, Zdenyuk must be a favorite to win a gammon here, I think. But uh, you know, it's it's reasonable. White can run off of it mm -hmm. without hitting a shot. Uh -huh. But here he goes. He gets his shot. That's nice. That would yeah. certainly help Limber the gammon. There it is. Yeah. That should save the gammon. No one's thinking about winning yet. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Blue has seven checkers <laughs> off. It is possible. Oh, oh. Wow. Now he really regrets that 22 to 16 play. Gee. Wishes he could be back there with more contact. Maybe not, though, because this might be enough to just have bottom the time to get off the gammon like we talked about. So, wow, oh. match is over, unless there's a double six rolling out of the cup right now. Wow, match is over. It's been an exciting yeah. match. We missed uh, a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, yeah, we, so we didn't get to talk about the format. We can do that real quick now. You can see that they're going to end the match at about just under a six for Christian and just under a seven for Zdenyuk. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way the points work in these matches is Zdenyuk is going to win one point for having won the actual match, right? Just like regular backgammon. But there's also a point awarded in this structure for whoever plays the, the better PR, the lower PR. Mm -hmm. And so Christian's going to win one point for that. Yes. And so they both got exactly one point for this one, right. where the ideal is to to play the lower PR and also win the match, in which case you, you get two points then. Mm -hmm. um, and so the format today, this is round one that we just got through for Zdenyuk and Christian, and the, there's 12 other matches going on in the room right now. Yes. Um, they'll all finish, and I think the next round should start around 3 o'clock. They're playing about every two hours. Mm -hmm. um, but six matches today. Yes. And once we get through those, whoever the 10 players with the, the most points accumulated, given the structure that we just talked about, they're going to move on to play another six rounds, I think, tomorrow. But they're going to play tomorrow again. And also, there are two wild card spots, I'll call them, uh, left open for whoever, the two players who did not make that top 10 players with the best overall PR. Correct. So there's two chances to just play a really good PR, and even if you lose all your matches and have a really hard time there, you can still make it to tomorrow if you mm -hmm. just play well enough. Yeah. Um, so it's a really interesting format designed to hopefully let the best players make it all the way to that final. Um, but that's, yeah, we've talked about getting to tomorrow, and then what's tomorrow? So tomorrow there will be 12 players competing, mm -hmm. um, and they will again start from scratch. So the points they accumulated today will not count. They start from scratch. They again play six, seven pointers. And then from those 12 players, uh, I think the three players with the most points qualify, plus the one player from the rest of the field with the lowest average PR. Yes. And yeah. these guys then will play, the four remaining players will play two seven-point matches against each other, mm -hmm. again with the opportunity of making one point for result, one point for lowest PR, and in case of a uh, tie, it will be the lowest PR. Yeah. So this is a revolutionary format mm -hmm. where all matches, by the way, will be transcribed automatically yeah, by yeah. some innovative system we all backgammon players have been waiting for eagerly for decades. Yeah, yeah. So all matches will be transcribed automatically after each round, so we will know the PRs like 15 minutes after each round. So it's an extremely exciting format yeah. and an exceptionally strong field, probably the strongest field of players ever assembled on planet Earth. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> because we have 26 players and I'm sure 22, 23, 24 of them are 
are grandmaster of grandmaster status. Yeah. So there is no intermediate player in the field, right. no advanced player in the field. It's really all players who play below 4 PR. Yeah. And it will be fascinating to see how these players adjust their game and how they take the format into consideration. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what they will focus on. Will they be willing to sacrifice, let's say, 30, 40 millipoints in PR in order to achieve a complicated game? Or will they really rigorously stick to the PR? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a very exciting format and all the players are excited. And we, we are looking forward to, to the second round. Format yeah, yeah. and all the players are excited. Be able to broadcast and we, we are looking forward to entirety yeah. and that we can <laughs> come back to uh, some of these topics later today. Yeah, yeah. And we can also say maybe that uh, I'm just here standing in for Mochi, who mm. will arrive later today yeah. and who will join you, Nick Blazier, uh, from six o'clock onwards, I think from around three or four. Yeah, so. yeah. So what is it? it's one o'clock and three o'clock are the first two matches and I mm -hmm. think at Five o'clock. There's a short break. Yeah, and so I think the next one is at six. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully you'll get. And then Mochi the, will be here. Yeah. yeah. For his. Uh, yeah, that's a long day of uh, backgammon commentating. I'm excited. I've, yeah, I've me too. It's this fascinating to watch <laughs> this here from <laughs> the front seat. So we yeah. hope everybody at home uh, will be watching later. We apologize once again for, uh, like, not being. How do you say that on the. Oh yeah, on time, Not technical being on difficulties. Time, sure, sure. Uh, encountering yeah. some um, yeah. some technical difficulties, but it's very hard yeah. for the for the team here to get this all going. But uh, we hope to uh, to be sharper. Yeah. From round two onwards. It always keeps getting better over the weekend too. Um, yeah. Took a while to get the stream going, but I think you know if we can, we'll try to get some way to to see the, the YouTube comments too. So mm -hmm. talk to us in the videos and hopefully I can answer any questions you got going on in there. Yeah. Um, what else do we have going on? Yeah, the crazy feel, I can't like, I don't know the last time, you know, I'm like working on my, my grandmaster title as well in BMAB, maybe I'll get that sooner than later. But yeah, so it's like not that often anymore that I can go sit in a room and have there be like 25 players are all like just clearly play better than me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's super exciting. It's great to be here yeah, yeah, yeah. and to be able to witness this here yeah. with uh, so close by. Yeah, yeah. So I think we have to say goodbye to our viewers for the moment yeah, and hope yeah, that they will yeah. be back. Um, Did we leave anything out about the format? I think we got it all. I think that was everything, you know. We can repeat it uh, then yeah. um, for round two. Yeah. But uh, maybe we can, maybe I can list for those interested, the players who are competing here, let me oh, yeah. go through the names. We uh, do, yeah, if you guys, if any of you are should like... Should be interested, but you can see it probably online. Or that's what there. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. If you guys jump to my Facebook page, too, if, if you're friends with me there, I've got, I've posted a bracket. I'm sure they're posted elsewhere, too. Yeah, but it's yeah, on, it's just it's like on a backgammongalaxy.com. It's on there, too, yeah, yeah. Backgammongalaxy.com. Yeah. This is, of course, an organization by, um, by Backgammon Galaxy. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, thanks yeah. so much to Mark for putting this all together. You know, I mean, he's got a huge team of people working on this, but he's playing the event somehow, too. I know I would not play my best backgammon <laughs> to be trying to organize this. Um, they've got a you can see we've got like a green screen behind us and everything so they can display the logo and everything. This is the most professional commentating setup I've seen yet. Mm -hmm. And upstairs is running just great, too. All the technology for transcribing this is a pretty cool thing to be part of. So, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. At least the commentators are excited, <laughs> and we hope that you are excited too at home. And we'll see each other later. Yeah, yeah. This is a good time to. Uh, Sounds good. To go Let's and have take coffee. a break. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Bye. Backgammongalaxy.com presents how to play backgammon, an exclusive tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking about components, setup, 